the newest version of Blender includes some really good enhancements in the video sequence editor, particularly for adding text objects. Uh, however, there is something that's a little bit lacking there in my opinion, and that would be the shadow option. By default, we get the shadow that's really just a duplicate of the text that's offset a certain number of pixels, and we can't really do a whole lot of configuring from there. We can change the color a little bit. We can kind of mess with the opacity or the alpha value of the color uh, from the color picker, but we can't really do a whole lot with it. So uh, I wanted to just put together a quick video, show you how you can add a drop shadow uh, that has some spread and offset that's configurable in Blender's VSC. So we'll go ahead and get into it. First thing you need to do, of course, is add a text object. So we'll add the text object to the video sequence editor, and we'll go ahead and pick a font. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, you can select a font file from your computer, or you can go ahead and download a font, say somewhere like Google Fonts, and then import that into, um, into Blender. Maybe save it somewhere like your desktop. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, configure this uh, text a little bit. We'll change the size of it. Uh, we'll configure the color of the of the text that we want to use. And then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, change the positioning of that. I like to set it to center uh, just so that the coordinates are relative to the center of the text, especially if I'm doing something that's supposed to be center of the screen. So once I have the text object added and configured how I like it in the video sequence editor, the next thing I need to do is add a blur effect. And I can do this from the Shift A add menu, just like I did with the text. So I'll go ahead and do that now. It's under effects, go to effect, and there it is. So we'll take this Gaussian blur and we'll actually give it an X and Y size. I typically start with 50, but you can play around with that depending on the size of your text on screen. And I like to just kind of hide, I'll use the H key to hide the original strip just to see what the blur looks like. And I went ahead and actually pulled the blur underneath the uh, text object. So that blur is gonna function as my shadow. Uh, currently it's the same color as the text though, so I need to go ahead and change that to a black color. I can do this by using the curves modifier for the strip and then just pulling that right point all the way down to the bottom. See, it's black now. Perfect. So the only other thing I need now is an offset. I need to be able to offset this shadow uh, maybe a little bit to the right, a little bit down from the text itself. So for that, I'll add a transform effect to the blur, but then I need to get the uh, transform object under the text as well. So from here, I can define uh, the offset value, and I'm gonna use uh, pixels instead of percent. And then I can just define the number of pixels uh, that I'd like to place my shadow away from the text. Perfect. Now we have that offset there. And just to, so this shows a little bit better, I'm gonna add a color strip just a white color strip and use that as a background so you can really see the, the shadow showing up. We'll pull those strips up and then just grab everything here. You can hit A to select everything, and then uh, G and then Y to just move on the Y axis. Perfect, the only thing left is it looks like my, yeah, my blur is, uh, still showing through, so if I hit H, that will mute the blur strip. So we're just using that transform as the, uh, the layer for our shadow. We can also adjust the opacity of the shadow if we want to. So if we don't want it to be quite as intense, we can, we can turn that down a little bit. But uh, I'm just gonna leave that full opacity. You know, you can make some adjustments uh, after the fact to the placement of the shadow. So it's really nice to work this way.
and you can change the uh, the blur or the spread amount for the shadow essentially. And I'm actually going to tighten that back up just a little bit. There we have it, my cool title. <laughs> Perfect. The last thing I like to do, um, and you'll see if you adjust the opacity of the text, this can be problematic. So the last thing I like to do is actually group these strips together, hitting Control G. It'll make a meta strip. And then you can just set this from replace to alpha over. And it'll just function as one object now when you adjust the opacity. So if you want your title to fade in, it won't fade in with the uh, shadow doing its own thing. It also makes it really easy to duplicate. So if I were to take this strip, duplicate it, I can easily go into this other one, just select it, hit tab, go into the meta strip, and then I can edit the text here if I want to. And ultimately, if I edit the text, um, I may also need to change the size of the text characters, so I can change that. And then hit tab again, come out here, and you can see that I have two titles, very easy. Cool. So that's all I wanted to share. Just a quick tip. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, any suggestions for future content. Uh, let me know if there's anything special that you do with text in Blender. And um, yeah, always happy to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching.